person. He will reveal how to make the world your home. Please give a warm welcome to our next speaker, Maxwell Moody. Misunderstandings. They cause a plethora of problems in our daily lives. Some as simple as having to repeat what you said. And before I move on, I'd like to ask the back row if you can hear me all right. Yes, the thumbs up, okay. And other times they yield to greater pains. Mistranslations are the source behind many misunderstandings. This was famously the case for a Norwegian student staying in Copenhagen. The student's misunderstanding came during a visit to the emergency room after he was smashed over the head with a glass during a bar fight. In the emergency room, he tried to explain to the medical staff that he suffered from a condition called hemophilia, which impairs one's body to control blood clotting. However, the doctor told him that he was fine, and that he could go on home. And you may be scratching your head wondering why this happened, and I'm sure he was too. Well, what happened was, the doctor misunderstood, thinking the student was saying he was a homophile, meaning he was gay, and naturally told him that he didn't need any medical assistance. So due to the small language barrier that separates Norway from Denmark, the doctor misunderstood the student's problem, and the student, thinking he was being treated for his injury, went home and was found dead two days later. So now I've got a question for you. How many of you would say that you're fluent in more than one language? It's almost half of you, that's great. And now, how many of you would admit that that's an exceedingly useful skill? It's the same exact people, right. When we learn more than one language, it is because we realize the potential benefits. That is to say, the doors that open once we understand that Atsivya in Russian means push in English. And, well, when we learn more than one language, either it's because we're brought up by parents of different nationalities or because we're living in a foreign country. Either way, the first and the second language become just as practical. Those of us who learn to communicate in more than one language earned the title of polyglot, which is a truly noble distinction. And here's why. Even today, when the impact of globalization is seen in almost every aspect of life, take these exotic plants, for example. Many fail to realize just the importance and beauty of other cultures. For example, the United States, I'll talk about my own country. Did you know that only one in five Americans can even understand another language? Whereas in Europe, a similar percentage speak only two languages, 25% are trilingual, and 10% speak four or more languages. And there's a special country called Luxembourg where 98% of the population speak two or more languages. Coincidentally, or as I like to say, consequently, the living standard in Luxembourg is one of the highest the world has to offer. It is because of this intercultural competence that has allowed the European countries to maintain long-standing peace, create the European Union, and countless trade deals. But even so, one could not call Europe a wishy-washy, happy melting pot either. Yeah, most people around the world for a long time have refused to suspend their own cultural norms when in another country. We'll take America as an example again. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the stereotypical American tourist. You know the one. They expect everyone to speak English and they eat at the American fast food chains and they're the loudest at the bars. Well, it's not always their fault. You see, whenever I travel and if I read the travel guide, sometimes I realize that um, they're actually 
directing tourists to the foreign favorites rather than the local treasures. And I think this is wrong. So today, I'd like to share with you how I have experienced other cultures and exercised my own intercultural competence. Because it's a school given little to no attention to, uh, it's a skill given little to no attention to in school, but has yielded me some of the most use. So I was born in Vienna, Virginia, not to be confused with Vienna, Austria, where I later spent five years of my life, to an American father and a Russian mother. And their marriage was especially controversial considering the anti-American mentality in the Soviet Union and the respective anti-Soviet mentality in the United States all throughout their childhood. Despite the odds, they maintained a globalized perspective. And not long after, this became the case for me as well. After a few months in America, I moved to Zagreb, Croatia, where I don't remember much, but my parents tell me that my first words were in Bosnian. So shout out to my Bosnian nanny. The first language I do remember speaking is French in a French preschool in Libreville, Gabon. But at the time, yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't like it much, and I was stubborn. But this year, I'm looking to get a 5 in AP French. So over the time, I've realized the true power and value of languages, and I've learned to appreciate them. Um, but I must make a quick disclaimer. It is impossible to discern all languages and cultures. I've tried. Um, there are just too many. But the more open-minded and aware you guys are in trying, the more benefits you'll reap. So, as it is coming close to lunchtime, I think I'll give you some examples with food. I was at a Korean friend's house once, for sleepover, and we sat down for dinner to this mountain of food with delicious dumplings, steamed rice, spice-infused stew, everything you could ever dream of. And so naturally, I began to eat everything I was served to show just how much I appreciated the meal. When I was done, boy, I was satisfied. My friend's mother, however, had a much different look. She looked shocked, amused, even offended. Before I could say a thing, she grabbed my plate and was filling it up with a full second serving. What the heck, I thought, I'll eat this too. And I did. And that went on for a few rounds before I came to my great epiphany. The rest of the night was a blur, and the next morning I refused to eat in fear of being stuffed like a duck for foie gras. Well, what I discovered that night was that in East Asian cultures, finishing a plate is synonymous with telling the cook, you didn't feed me enough. And so, next time I went over, I left a reluctant spoonful of food to show that I was well fed. Now let's fly over to France for my next cultural encounter with food. I was in Nantes over the summer with a group of Americans, and we went to a restaurant that specialized in crepes, which are paper-thin pancakes, I'm sure most of you know. And so we were in the region that specializes in galettes, which are crepes containing eggs and ham. So we ordered that and the chocolate crepes, two for each of us. And then we sat down, we were ready to eat. It was about noon, mind you, so you could imagine how our teenage tummies were growling like bears. And yeah, we talked about it. We talked about how ready we were to eat. Then that conversation ended. So I pulled out my deck of cards, we started playing. And then we finished playing. Jeez, we had to move the umbrella. That's how long the service was taking. It took 30 minutes before we saw the waiter for the second time. And when we did, I asked him, where's our food? Well, it's coming, it's coming. So 10 minutes later or so, the first round of crepes came, and we ate that quickly, and then we waited another half hour before the second round came. And by the time the check came around, we were debating whether to call this outing brunch or dinner. The service in France is notoriously slow. And seeing our dissatisfaction, the waiter sat down 
and explained to us that in France, unlike some places, we eat slowly. A meal is not simply a time to gobble down your food, but a time to make plans, make jokes, tell stories, and just relax. Hmm, I thought. How oddly fascinating. So for the rest of the month in France, I tried to show my appreciation of that cultural ideology, and I ate slowly. What I'm trying to show you with these experiences of mine is that foreign experiences are the ones we can learn from and profit from the most. And I think that schools should be teaching this to children if we want the future generation to be successful in a globalized world. For now, only some exclusive schools, like international schools, are achieving this by teaching a diverse group of children together. But I think that all schools should be teaching students to be open-minded and aware of other cultures and want to learn more about them. And so, yeah, if, if any of you have never left Kiev or Ukraine, I urge you on your next opportunity to go out, venture, voyage, and ex experience some other cultures. And the point I would like to finish my speech on is that everyone should seek out foreign experiences because they're interesting, usually, and if not, they make good stories. Thank you. Thank you.